I have yet to figure out exactly when this thing starts broadcasting. Uh, several times, several times I have started talking and you all missed the beginning of it. At other times, you catch all this stuff and I start acting like I'm being broadcasted. So anyway, there we go. I think all is, all, all is on. <laughs> Welcome, my name's Dan Nelson. I'm an artist, and today I'm working on correcting a wedding portrait that I started last Saturday. Now, doing wedding paintings is one of my main, uh, the main channels of my career. Go to Wedding Painter Magic, you can see my paintings there. Now, in a, in a way, I've sort of painted myself into a corner, <laughs> to use that <laughs> very appropriate word picture. Uh, I used to do you know, a, a view of the reception in this case. And little by little over the last year, I've gotten myself into doing a full on portrait. Again, a portrait the size of my thumb. That's insane. Um, I'm not sure how to get out of it. Um, I, uh, anyway, that, that'd be that as it may. I, I have to finish this whole painting. And normally, I finished my wedding paintings there on site that night. This this reception ended, thank goodness, at midnight. I'm glad it wasn't any earlier than that, I, or I would really have been in trouble. Um, but it was, and again, I have to be careful because these people might watch this video. <laughs> it was a little more challenging evening than normal. Um, I couldn't talk to the bride and groom till late in the process, so I got a really late start. These are all my excuses. Please break out the violin, would you? I got a really late start, and I had to move my easel one time after I got started, and and uh, I'm not sure that's the reason, but for some reason I didn't I didn't feel that I was quite as on my game, shall we say, as I like to be, and as I usually am, by the way. I usually do quite well under pressure. I do well with an audience, and the other night I had both pressure and audience, yet don't feel like I did all that great. Now, everybody there seemed pretty happy. The good news is, and let me show you what I've got so far. The good news is that this looks a lot like a young man and this looks a lot like a young woman. That's the good news. So the good news is most people are so impressed by, whoa, he painted a man and a woman, you know, beautifully right there. Now, the, the groom's parents told me, oh, yeah, it looks exactly like him. And it, it may be that it does, but I'm going to make some changes anyway. And um, the bride, not so much. So you may have seen me do this before, but I want to show you a technique that I have developed for helping me get portraits right. I'll try not to give this long, 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 long teaching spiel again because they've given it so many times. I'm gonna do real quickly. When you're working on portraits, which are the hardest thing in the world, and by the way, a portrait the size of your thumb is ridiculously difficult. So again, break out the violin for me. One of the principles I think you need to understand is what I call portrait blindness. <laughs> now this applies to anything, but especially to portraits. And that is after several minutes, 15, 20, 25 minutes, I would think at the outside for most people, once you've been staring at your work for that long, you become blind to the mistakes. Now, we, um, I learned this starting especially in 2012. That was six years ago. I decided in 2012 to make this for me, the year of the portrait. And I actually had a blog going where I tried to do one portrait every day really quickly. Uh, no corrections, just bam, just draw it. No cheating, just look and draw. And I posted it and I invited viewers to critique and I trained them how to critique. Uh, when you're making corrections in your portrait, here I'm getting in too deep, but again, some of you need to hear this. When you're making, when you're doing portraiture, here's the kind of language that must not enter your vocabulary or your brain. Here's the the words that should not appear in your brain when you're doing portrait. Words like mouth, nose, lip, cheek, eyebrow, eye, uh, rounder, bigger, 
all of that language is not only meaningless, actually harmful to you as a portrait painter, because it's all uh, throws up decoys. Here's the kind of language you want to be speaking inside your mind. Up, down, left, right. That's, that's pretty much it. Lighter or darker, of course, as well. But you have to, have to move something up, move something down, to the left or to the right, or any angle thereof. Because you're working on a flat surface. We're not working when you say rounder. Anyway, again, I'm getting too, too deep. But uh, either this guy's eye needs to go up, down, or to the left or to the right. When you say things like, it needs to look more happy, or it needs to look more rounder, meaningful, meaningless. Hi, hey, Michelle, Lynn, yes, painting small portraits is insane. Anyway, and the other night, well, by the way, you break out the violin again. I discovered I got there. I didn't have any, any, any good brushes for painting this small. So anyway, but let me show you this trick. And I've shown you this before, so some of you this will be reviewed. Here's what I do with my backup. Let me turn my music down just a little bit. With my backup camera, which is my old phone, here's what I do. I take a picture. So, okay, you can see my. I take a picture, say, of the groom. Click, right, of the painting. And then I have in my phone, I already have the photograph. Of the groom let me show that to you real quickly well this will do here it is right there okay so there's a there's the photograph of the groom can you see that and there's a photograph of my painting and then I take those same images and I flop them in other words I make a mirror image why do I make a mirror image because I'm experiencing portrait blindness and one of the best ways to recover from portrait blindness is to use a mirror or in this case use a mirror effect on your phone by flopping something backwards so you're seeing the mirror image does that make sense now partly because you guys are watching and i can show this on paper i took the liberty this morning i took the liberty of printing out this image right here you see that image so i printed it out on my computer and i sat in the chair right over there for about 10 minutes and here's what i did let me let me take this down for a minute so i can hold this still and show it to you really carefully okay and again this took probably a grand total of 10 minutes point being it didn't take very long 10 minutes in the course of doing a portrait is not very long let me zoom right in so I can show you what I did. First of all, here's a photograph of my painting. And here's a photograph of the model, the groom. Then I take those two images and I flop them this way. All of a sudden, when I look at these images, I can see errors and mistakes that I couldn't see this way. Does that make sense to you? This is a mirror image. You can accomplish the same thing by looking at your painting and your reference file, your reference in the mirror. The advantage of printing it out on paper is like, oh, wait a minute, now I can start making notes. And all I have to do is find one mark on this, on my painting somewhere that I think looks pretty close to accurate, okay? So that's that becomes like an anchor point. In this case, I decided I'm gonna write it, and I have just here a fun, a pen that writes white, black, and red. So I decided that the bridge, the, 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 the line of his nose, I drew this right here, was pretty accurate. I'm going to say, yeah, I'm going to say that's my starting point. Then from there, I started not only making changes. Let me bring you in real close so you can see this, hopefully. Okay, so you can see my numbers. So I started making corrections and I actually literally number them. First correction, line at bottom of nose, number one. Number two, remove that dark spot. Number three, uh, number two, adjust the angle of the eye. Number three, and see, adjust angle, that's okay, adjust angle, that's left, right, up, down. Number three, move this, this eyelash up. Number four, eyebrow. Number five, eyebrow. 
Number six, uh, this moves forward a little bit. That's enough. I've, I've given you the idea. Um, all the way up, in this case, to 19 different modifications that I'm going to make on this groom's face. Now, sometimes I'll, sometimes I'll take those same 19 and re-mark them over here, but I don't think I need to do that normally. But I do need to take them. And Does this sound very uh, obsessive, compulsive to you? Good. It should. <laughs> I cannot imagine being a portrait painter and not having a little bit of OC, not OCD, not dysfunction, just some real order in your mind. And when I look at good portrait painters, yeah, they're all kind of like that, you know, measure this, measure that. And, and when you're impatient and bored, you're looking at it and saying, I don't want to take all that time. I just want to draw the thing. Well, that's, we call you people abstract painters, <laughs> or we call you bad portrait painters. Good portrait painters, as far as I can tell, all of them, they've got this system. They use their, they do measuring, they do any, something like that. Again, uh, Mark Carter, uh, Daniel Green, Nelson Shanks, uh, local guy here uh, in Raleigh, new guy. Um, oh, what's his name? I'm drawing a blank. He'll come back to me in a minute. Anyway, order, order, slow, slow, meticulous. So this just happens to be my method of doing slow and meticulous. So let's let's get started making the exact changes that I've just told you about, and and I'm going to use this cheat sheet, this paper. By the way, um. One of the benefits of this approach to correcting, um, like there are other ways to get portraits correct. Grid, right? Using a grid, tracing, projecting, which a lot of professional, most professional illustrators do that. The problem with that, what I call cheating, and all cheating is legal. I don't want, need any comments saying it's not cheating. Well, it's what I call cheating is anytime. You're using an artificial means to, pr to get the image on there, like tracing, carbon paper, grid, uh, anything like that, okay? Um, that's what I call cheating. It's all legal, but you have to remember when you do that, your powers of observation are deteriorating, okay? Now, I feel, I would, evidently, I was not really on my game last Saturday night. I've already given you some, I didn't have the right brushes anyway, but I, I, I have no excuses, I just have Say, la vie, that's the way it goes. Okay, the, the good news is I have the painting and I can finish it. I'm gonna get it on my game. I'm not gonna deliver this painting until I'm very happy with the likeness. Okay, so let's get started. And I'm going to, um, can this adjust? Uh, 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 hang on. There we go. Um, and again, I'm going to use this. So, so I have to translate mark number one is nostril the nose, and that means I'm moving it down here. So let me go ahead and pick up a small brush. This will be, this will be my dark details brush. I have a number of brushes, and by the way, today I do have good brushes at my disposal, um, which will make this job a whole lot easier. This is what I did not have the other night. Okay, modification number one, done. Let's go on to number two. Does that make sense? And by the way, let me, can I show you my brushes down here? I think I can. Yeah, there we go. So I have, this is just a, you know, one of those stupid things that artists do. Well, I don't mean stupid, but like it's, it's so simple. It's just a piece of styrofoam that I melted a bunch of holes in. Just took a wood burner or a soldering iron and went, psst, psst, outdoors because it's poison gas when you melt styrofoam. It's another subject. So anyway, I can just drop my brushes in there and and uh, it's not good to store brushes point side up, but look, <laughs> by the way, I say it's not good to point to store brushes point side up. <laughs> look at, here's 150 brushes all stored point side up. But anyway, I've heard it's not good for them, but I do it anyway because I don't have time or space to do anything different. Okay, say so number one is done. What is number two? Oh, I have need to mix up some some pale flesh tone now. So I'm over here mixing up a little oxide red, little um, 
And again, please do not take notes. Do not do not record this. You know, don't say, oh, 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 what does he use for light flesh? No, no, use your eyeballs. Just use your eyeballs. I happen to be using yellow ochre, oxide red, and titanium white. That's all. But that is not important. You should not be copying that. Um, so it says here I'm supposed to remove the front edge of this dark eye part. And then I'm supposed to redraw, now back to the dark brush, you see, I, so it, the, I'm switching brushes, I'm supposed to redraw the arc of his eyelid and the front part of his eyelid and the crease above his eye. There we go. This is so much easier. Again, I didn't have any of these brushes the other night, so I was kind of having a fit trying to get this stuff done. Okay, um, color number three. I'm mixing up another color. To the background of Oh yeah, this whole eyelash right here is completely erroneous. Erasing that, so to speak, erasing that completely. The old eyelid, eyelash, I mean, and then moving it up. How much? Wow. Quite a bit. This is one of the main mistakes that I made the other night in, in the groom. His head is tilted and I had his head, head rendered as if it was straight. And then his eyebrow needs to be raised again, still working with the dark. Now, I understand that everything I'm doing right now is going to become way too tedious for you guys to watch. I mean, it's not too tedious for me to do because my brain's going, buddy, 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 buddy. My brain's working really hard trying to get all this stuff done. So it's not hard for me, but I, I know that it would be much too monotonous for you guys to watch for any real length of time. Okay, now that's number three. Number four, the eyebrow, got it. Number five, this eyebrow. Oh my goodness. Okay, for one thing, it goes a little too long, so I'm gonna remove the end of it. I just want you to hear, and it, it's too arched, so I'm flattening out the top of it. I just want you to hear the, uh, the process, the, mind, the, the way my, what my mind is doing. And look at my grit, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I tell my students. Never paint that way, <laughs> right? Well, okay, never never hold your breast this way unless, of course, you're doing a portrait the size of a quarter or a nickel. Then, yes, you can. <laughs> then, yes, of course, you have to hold the brush most of the time in the control grip. And look, I'm not painting with two hands. Yes, this is irritating to me. Um... Okay, that's number five. Let me do, I'll show you one more. Number six. Oh, yeah, slight adjustment. Um, this part of his forehead needs to come just a tiny bit forward. And a little bit higher. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to pause there. By the way, I'm going to do the same thing with the bride. I had 19 changes on the groom. I have... 23, 24, 25 adjustments on the bride. I was really, man, really missing my game. But when I, hopefully when I finish those 25 on the bride, it will be hopefully a dead ringer for Samantha. Um, but this is too, too small and too monotonous for you guys to watch for any length of time. So I'm going to go ahead and, and release you. Please release me. Let me go. I hate that song. <laughs> from the 70s. Some of you are lucky you weren't alive to, to hear it. I'm sorry if that was your favorite song. I, I hate it. But anyway, you know the way songs do, especially ones you don't like, they stick in your brain. Okay? Um, I hope, more than anything else, I hope that's instructive to those of you who are trying to master the art of portraiture. This is just one way, one way. I'll talk to you again soon.
Uh, yeah, Michelle, my teacher told me never to hold that. Oh, she was correct. She was right, Michelle. That, she was absolutely right. Unless you're doing something as stupid as <laughs> doing a portrait <laughs> that big. <laughs> okay, that's it. Thanks, guys. I'll